waiting room. A life but not living the life to the fullest. That who I was in 2018 until 2019. So I was in the moment what people called uh, burning out at work. It's just like I didn't have any courage to go to work. Even though I wake up really, I woke up really hard just to actually to go to the office from nine to five. It's actually just like a routine for me to get salary at the end of the month. So I like to actually describe life is kind of waiting in the waiting room. And I believe each of us have experienced waiting in the waiting room. Maybe you are want to go somewhere and then you need to wait in the waiting room and during the time in the waiting room to make you not bored maybe you will have two options actually maybe you just spend your time to read a book or even like uh, just try to chit chat with a person uh, i mean with the stranger beside you something like that but what about if maybe your flight is delayed and it's take too long for you to wait. Maybe you start to get angry, right? And that's the moment I had at, at, the, at the moment. Because the thing that I really want at the moment is was a new job. I really want a new job. That's what I really want in life. And yeah, so until in 2019, early 2019, my friend told me, what about you don't really, you didn't really uh, want a job. You just want maybe a new atmosphere and he uh, she asked me about the working holiday visa and that's i think that's the change for me to maybe escape from my work leave it uh, leave it leave it and just go somewhere and yeah by the end of the, by the end of 2019 i got my visa one year visa and with everything that i need to plan i need to plan so i decided to uh, schedule my flight to March 2020, which it, which was the moment COVID-19 hit the world, and uh, the border uh, is a uh, west close. So yeah, it's just like me in my waiting room. Uh, I mean, it's of uh, the flight is delayed, and I need to go back to my waiting room. At the moment, I was really, I mean, like I'm, I was really devastated at the moment because I, I didn't, I didn't know what to do anything else i mean i need to go back to my routine with my work that i really hate something like that but at the end covid 19 in 2020 is just like change my perspective in a good way it's just like uh for example it's make me actually wondering what i really want in life so it's it's time for creating a, an authenticity and then the second one too really grateful that's the first time maybe I was really grateful for having a job. That's it. And yeah, with along the way, I just try to uh, do anything positive. Try to do uh, everything that maybe can make me better and just try to catch up every opportunity that I want. And I would say maybe there's a silver raining lining in each of the season. So yeah. 2020 is actually the year the year of kind of i would say perseverance for me so it's just i love the quote say perseverance is the hard work you do after you get tired of doing the hard work you already did so that's 2020 for me i just like trying to maybe applying for scholarship for my master and then just trying to apply new job so yeah i just try to um catch any opportunity i don't know uh, whether i will get it but the good news is two months ago finally my waiting uh, time was offered i got a new job and that that the job that i really want so yeah the waiting is over and i'm really grateful with what i have now even though it's the tough one i mean it's not easy job i need to learn a lot uh yeah, because, you know, it takes time to adapt, but 
I believe that I will, I can do that again because I already uh, go, went through uh, the hard time before and I make sure that I will pass this one as well. So yeah, I just want to say that in which uh, in in whichever waiting room we are or where uh, wherever the destination we want, maybe in the waiting room, it's not the good time to actually to just keep being idle. Maybe we need to do something good, something positive that make us grow. Because I believe that's totally true what people say that the hard time actually uh, make you, uh, how to say it, it's actually the process for you to be a better version of yourself. So I think that's really true. And yeah, that's my story actually in in couple of years of this couple of these years and i hope it can also inspire you and yes at the end there's always it's always worth it the fight thank you so we have seen we have listened to the speech of toastmaster tika and congratulations for delivering your speech about waiting room so the purpose is to present a speech of any topic and receive feedback from the evaluator so the purpose is well delivered in time so congratulations toastmaster tika and let's move to the general comments you excel at three things the first one is crafting well-structured speech the second one is preparing powerful content and the third one is relating to experience by sharing your personal experiences. The first one, well-structured speech. We can see that you have put the prologue about burnout that you've experienced in 2018. And then we can see the main body that the first one is idea of new atmosphere that you need to enter. The second body is about the conflict when the pandemic occurs. And the third body is resolution. So you have got a change in perspective after the conflict. And after the three parts of the body, you move to the ending that you've got happy ending, that new job, and you close this speech with powerful message in the end. Maybe we need to do something to make us good. And also hard time is a process for you to be a better version of yourself. So, well done, you have excelled at those three things and keep it up. And there are always rooms for improvement. As I've seen that you may want to work on maintaining eye contact and using more gestures. First of all, because your message was already powerful. The content was powerful enough for to touch our heart, to remind us that what do we need to do when we are in the waiting room. So the content itself was already powerful. And imagine if you use your eye contact and your gesture, you can increase the impact significantly. Because we believe that more part of the message is delivered visually rather than verbally. It is about 55% visually. So that is how significant our eye contact and gestures. To challenge yourself in the next speech, especially near speech after this year, your second speech of this project, besides working on your eye contact and gesture, Try also to manage the tempo and speech phrasing to add tension in your key message. So, when you are in the waiting room, utilize everything for good and find the silver lining, some kind of depth tension. After all, good luck and back to our G. Thank you.